Hey guys, I'm Greg McDonald with SurvivalSupplyTraining.com. Uh, welcome to our show today. In this episode, we're going to build a homemade water filter to help filter your water in this wilderness situation. Alright guys, this is Greg, uh, back with you from Survival Supply and Training. Today we're going to do in this training video how to build a water filter using natural elements that you would find in the woods. Now you are going to need a 2 liter bottle or uh, some type of, of uh, container, uh, preferably a plastic container, a water bottle or what have you. Uh, but other than that, for the filter media we're going to use all natural elements that we find out in the wilderness. Uh, some of the things we're going to use are some gravels. You can see right here we've got a nice pile of gravels. We're going to use a little rope later on. Uh, we're also going to use some sand. We're going to use some uh, grass and leaves that we find out in the wilderness. And we're going to use those elements to build a filter. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to cut the uh, top off this, or the bottom, I'm sorry. The bottom off this two liter bottle. As always, when you're using a sharp instrument, to be safe. Out in a wilderness situation, the last thing you want to do is cut yourself and uh, create another emergency on top of your emergency. So I'm being, going real slow and being cautious. We won't need that. Um, so, what I've got is an open container or open top, bottom I should say, of the two liter bottle. So, what we're going to do is, is take the lid off, uh, we're going to use the lid. I'm going to drill some holes in the lid using my handy dandy knife while trying not to slice my finger open. That would be bad. We want our holes to be, uh, I don't know, an eighth inch in diameter. And the more holes that we put in it, the faster the water will drain. However, we don't want to put so many holes that uh, that the water drains too quickly. So I'm going to say that we're going to put about five holes in it. If I can fit five holes in it. I'm going to open them up from the back side just to make sure that they're nice and open. Again, be safe uh, using the knife. Obviously, this is a situation where you can jam this through your hand. That would not be pleasant. Alright, so you can see my holes. See those? You see on the back side, I've actually got four in it. I don't know. An eighth, three sixteenths, something like that, in diameter. Okay, we're going to put our lid back on our bottle. Now we want to uh, place a wadded up leaf down inside this neck, um, down in this area here, and that is to prevent our sand from washing out. So let's find some leaves. Um, right here looks like some good candidates. I just got a nice big, uh, what is that, a maple leaf. So I'm going to wad it up, break the stem off just so it's not sticking out. And I'm not wadding it up so tight that uh, moisture can't penetrate it. And I didn't shove it down in there very tight either. It's just loosely packed. Because we want the water to pass around the leaf, but at the same time we want the sand to stay inside the container. Okay, so now we're going to put some sand in our container. I'm just going to dip up some river sand here. Yeah, that, that was actually perfect. About halfway full. Okay, now we're going to put some rocks. And 
And what we're duplicating is the natural filtering process that occurs in nature. Uh, water filtering process, I should say, that occurs in nature. Okay, so I filled it about as many rocks as I did uh, as I did sand. And now on top of that, I've got a pretty good wad of grass here. I'm just going to put that right on top of that, like so. Okay, now, and I should have done this beforehand, I'm going to drill a couple holes in the side of this. And what we want to do is we're, we're doing those so that we can put rope uh, through there to hold it up. There is one hole. There is another hole. And I'm going to set this down for just a moment while I get my paracord ready. Now, everybody should be carrying paracord in any of your uh, outdoor travels. You should have this in your survival kit, your everyday carry kit, uh, whatever you want to call it, whatever you're carrying every day, you should have paracord. I recommend at least 50 feet of paracord. Now I'm going to use about, oh, what is that, about two feet, I guess? And it really doesn't matter how much you use. I mean, you can use shorter or longer. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this to hang this from a, uh, a tree limb so that the water, we can pour the water through the filter and catch it on the, uh, from the bottom. So if we have to hold this with our hand, um, it, may, it, may be, it may become cumbersome. So we're just going to make life a little easier by using just a, a little bit of paracord here. Back to one side. For the other side. Yeah, that was a good length that I cut. I don't know, maybe two feet of paracord. Just a simple little open hand knot. And there you have it. There's our water filter. Now we're going to hang this from a tree limb. And we're going to pour water through it. And the water will come out the bottom nice and clean. Uh, so I'm going to hang this up in our, in our tree limb. As you can see, we've got a really awesome tree limb here on the bottom of our uh, camera tripod. Just stay with that just a minute. <clears throat> okay, I'm back. A um, couple things to remember about water in, in the wild. Well, first of all, we have to pull water into it through this. We could just take and dip this into the river, catch our water, and then turn it upside down and let it drain. Uh, I happen to have another container that we're going to use to pour water through it. And then I'm going to use a metal container to catch that water in. Now why am I using metal, you ask? By the way, this is an army surplus, uh, military surplus. I think this is made in Sweden, uh, mess kit. And I'm just going to let the water catch in the bottom of that container. Why are we doing this? What we're going to do is because we're either going to boil the water, or if we have iodine or some type of purification tablets, we would use those to... Uh, to purify the water. This filter will only clean out sediment and uh, color. You know, when we pour water through here, it's going to come out the bottom clear. However, I wouldn't call it clean. Now, there's a lot of pathogens out in the wild that you do not want to get into your system. Uh, so you want to make sure that after you, clear, you uh, filter the water, and you catch it in this, we're going to purify it by either boiling or by uh, water purification tablets. I'm going to catch some water. Hopefully I won't fall in the river. Although that would make for a great video. As you can see, this water 
has a dingy color to it. So hopefully when we pour it through our filter, it'll come out with a clear color at the bottom. Um, one thing I want to add is that you may need to run your water several times through this filter to get it completely clear. Uh, I promise you it will work, but it may take several times. Now, I'm actually going to move my can. We just put this filter together, so what's going to happen is when we pour the water in, sand, some sand, is going to come out of it. Uh, so I'm not going to catch that in our, uh, in our can at the moment. You can see water coming out the bottom. Actually, I will catch that just to, uh, to show you what I'm talking about. It's a pretty effective system. Uh, once the, uh, as you can see now, the water is cleared up. Uh, this, I'm going to do just a little bit of sediment coming through. But I'll show you what I was talking about. You can see some of the sand that came out of our filter through the system. So, I'm actually going to just pour that right back in the top. And now, kitchen, pretty well. I did overfill, overfill, overfill the filter slightly, and water came out, came out my hole. So, we may have to do this a couple times. Trying the water to drip through, just as it would in nature, through rocks, through sand, uh, through vegetation. I'll refill my filter this little bit. I'm going to pour some of this water out. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is getting clear. It's not clean yet, but it is getting clear. Make you aware that this may take this may take quite a while to actually do this. Uh, by quite a while, I mean it may take 30 minutes for you to get completely clear water. It may take an hour. It, it really just depends on the clarity of your water to begin with. Uh, if you take water out of a mud hole and it's just full of mud, then obviously it's going to take longer than if you took water out of a naturally occurring creek in the mountains. Remember, you need to boil this water or treat it with some type of water purification treatment. This is a good pre-filter. If you've got a cation water filter, this would make an excellent pre-filter to uh, get out some of the sediment before you ran through your cation to help prevent stopping up your cation water filter and extend the life of it. As you can see, it's a very simple made, uh, sand, rocks, and, and vegetation, and uh, some type of bottle. The water is getting clear, by the way. Hard to tell on the camera with the color adjustment and uh, being out here in the direct sun, but it is getting clear. I'm not sure what our time, how long we've been running this, I'm going to guess, I don't know, five or six minutes.
so. I'll show you just a little bit of water here. It's on this silver pan. I hope you can see. That water is very clear. Uh, now there is a little bit of sediment still in it. That may be, I, I don't know if I had that still in the pan when I caught that or not. I didn't really pay attention. But uh, that water is getting very clear compared to this muddy green river that we're at. And again, just keep running your water through the filter multiple times. Um, it will eventually get clear. But every time you, you run it through, you're putting cleaner water back in. Also remember to allow your filter to run just a couple of minutes to get all the sand and, and loose stuff out of it. Now I tapped it right there, and this shows the importance of, of not touching the filter. I tapped it, and you can see I got a little bit of sand and, and back to a little bit of, of uh, somewhat unclear water. So make sure you don't touch your, your filter, just let it run naturally. Again, I'm just going to dump that right back in there. So is this the ideal way to uh, filter water? No, absolutely not. Uh, however, it's a very makeshift way. It's very usable, very easily done. Um, with simply a, a bottle. It doesn't even have to be a two liter bottle. I mean, you can use a 20 ounce bottle or a gallon jug for that, for that matter. Uh, just any type of bottle that has a cap on the end that you can poke a hole in. Uh, and it'll work, folks, I promise you. All right, I'm going to show you the water one more time. You can see how clean that water is. Crystal clean. And that took about five minutes. So we're going to go for now. This is Greg McDonald with Survival Supply and Training. Please visit us on our website, www.survivalsupplyandtraining.com. Or visit us on Facebook at www.facebook.com backslash Survival Supply and Training. We've got tons of tricks and tips and techniques and all kinds of good information on Facebook. We've got a bunch of good uh, equipment for sale on our, uh, on our website. Um, so come check us out. Thanks for watching.